Oh, I can't take no more time. I've got to let Pastor Frank count. Bless you. I love you. I love you, man. You're my brother, my pastor, my friend, and I think that absolutely the world of you. So does the Father. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Hopefully we can get this thing loud enough where you can hear Pastor Frank. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for this wonderful time. Before I do anything, I just want to honor you. Our pastor, Larry, all the way from India. We, I brought this lady to just honor him. Pastor Larry, please. Oh. Can you come? I didn't hear you, Pastor. Oh, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You brought that from India? Oh, yeah. Oh, On behalf of our church uh, and family. Oh, yes, sir. This one, yeah. This will be for a Maharaja, the king, you know, we think. Oh, thank you, no. <laughs> when you go to India, when I live in India, in every church you go to preach, they always put these on you, but they're freshly made up. Oh, uh, but I can't. Fresh flowers, you know, my shirt's wet, it just runs off me, it smells so refreshing. Am I right? But I can't uh, bring that fl- flower, you know. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> yeah, this is supposed to be what, Pastor? It's, uh, you know, in, in, in our state, in Karnataka, we, in the state of Karnataka, you know, you have kings, you know, like yeah. the smallest little kings. The king, the crown of a king is like that. Oh, so there's the honor. It's a kind of honor. When you honor somebody back in India, you do a special honor. It's that. It's a cap. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Jesus be blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes, thank Amen. you. Yeah, glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I, I thank and praise the Lord for the Lord enabling me to be back here to Music Mountain. Um, as I've been always uh, thinking back, 22 years ago I came to this little town here in Arizona. I never even heard about this name, nothing of that. Brother Bill Hart he insisted me that I should, and all, all, almost I know I. I I got my dates and everything to go back to India because I was so kind of drained in my heart. That trip in 1990, he said, you've got to go to Truxton, you've got to go. You know, I said, I have, I have no way, you know, uh, I don't know anything how to reach a place called Truxton. I was uh, already in Orange County, in LA, outskirts of LA. So I was staying uh, with a family. And I said, you know, do you heard, heard anything about trucks? And I said, they said, how in the world we would know trucks? And we have not heard at all. Uh, truck, a name called trucks. And I said, I need to go. One of my friends is so much insisting upon me that uh, I visit this church, little church. Anyway, I was kind of wondering about how to come here and uh, transportation and so on. So that family eventually. They happened to go across Truxton, go somewhere in Arizona during the same time, which I planned when I planned to come here. So they thought, let us give a, a ride to you, and they just a little bit deviated their, um, you know, their trip, and um, they were kind enough to drop me at Kingman, and that's the first time I saw Pastor Larry, and he saw me the first time we got together in our hearts, and you know the story. 22 years of uh, fellowship with you, precious saints of God. It's not just a fellowship, it's a bondage in Christ Jesus. Uh, you know, we have to bind it together um, with chains of love. So always uh, we don't forget to pray for each one of you, each uh, one of you, for each of your family members. Every time we go to the Lord, we remember Music Mountain, Bible Chapel, and the brothers and sisters here who have been uh, such a great uh, uh, source of help uh, for us back in India that our Lord may bless our work, enlarge our coast and you know bless the ministry. When I came in 1990, we hardly had um, around 200 people or 250 maybe in our church. And at home uh, we had about, in a children's home, we had 15 children we raised uh, uh, for the glory of God. Today the Lord has blessed us to raise uh, 76. No, right now there are 76 children in our children's homes. And we have raised so many children over these years, 22 yes. years. 
who have, you know, who have attained their manhood and have gone different places, uh, you know, in different placements, who have been married, have children, and some of them are well educated and so on. So it's a blessing of the Lord and uh, your sacrificial love gives from time to time. That has really, really helped us in you know, every drop of water makes an ocean. So whatever little you have been, each of you have been able to give, what the church has been able to give over the years, the Lord has enlarged our question today. We have more than 2,000 people in our church, the church. And we have 45 sister churches, satellite churches. Yes, sir. And uh, you know, we have raised missionaries and sent them out as they have been telling you and reporting you to you from time to time. And we have been able to do something what uh, people may not expect, what may, what may uh, you know, uh, make a uh, surprise the things what the Lord has been doing to us. One of the things recently we did was to, uh, you know, distribute uh, shoes for the widows in a, in a society. Now when we go for a social work, you know, this is something like an umbrella. There's a covering for us for, uh, to do the gospel work. Back in India, in our state especially, that's called the spiritual, uh, spiritual desert of uh, India. Where the whole, you know, the, 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 the state is governed by the gurus. You know gurus? Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, they are the ones who have real influence with the people. What they say is that they say. If they say yes, it is yes. If they say no, it's no. They are the ones who control the whole thing, the society. So it's very, very hard for us to penetrate uh, this region with the gospel of Jesus Christ because uh, we may put into danger and so many of our people have, uh, you know, been manhandled, they've been beaten and, uh, you know, so many things have happened uh, over the years. And recently it has been happening too much. Like every day I have to be careful of myself when I walk on the street, go, you know, ride a, a cycle, a motorcycle, or ride a four-wheeler, whatever it is. I have to be careful for myself. Uh, God forbid the Lord has been taking care of uh, us. But it is a kind of a situation where we are in because they think that we are uh, proselyting. Is it right? Proselyting? Yeah. yeah, proselyting the people to Christianity and uh, Hinduism is being decreased and so on. So that's a kind of a situation back in India. But by the grace of God, the Lord has been teaching us to be, to be wise in doing things. So doing this uh, social work like feeding, feeding the hunger, taking care of the widows and you know meeting the needs of the people. Like uh, the, uh, having water wells, putting water wells in the uh, in, in the villages where in the community where you do not have uh, you know enough water. Water scarcity is always there in our uh, in our region. So we try to dig uh, you know put bore wells, pump out water, and for the whole community, and let them know that we love them because of the love of Jesus Christ. So this way we try to share the love of Jesus by giving them bread, distributing bread loaves. Um, giving them food, giving them clothing, whatever best we could do, whatever the best uh, uh, the Lord would provide us. As the Lord provides, we try to help these people. So recently we gave shoes to 350, 350 pairs of shoes to 350 widows. And this was really appreciated by, even by the non-Christian society. And the, you know, the media, they brought a news saying, church donates shoes, you know, footwears for poor widows. So the Lord has, uh, you know, we were able to glorify the name of the Lord through these small little things, doings, good things. And one of the highlights I would uh, lay of the ministry, what I would like to report to you this morning is uh, our early morning prayers. The Lord really put in my heart a few years ago, three or four years ago, that we need to mobilize more prayer for our nation, for our people, for the families of the churches, because they go through so many problems. You know, all over the world, you know, people are going through so many problems. The only way out is that to pray and to seek the Lord, to pour out our hearts. So I call for early morning prayer that we may have a special uh, prayer campaign like 21 days of early morning prayer. People thought this, how in the world you could have a 21 days, you know, like exclusive 21, consistent 21 days early morning. Every day people come at 5 o'clock, they go back to home at 6.30 because you know, most of them have to go to work or to schools and other things, you know. So people thought, you know, it's not, it's not possible. But in my heart, I said, whatever people think, whatever you may think, it is not possible. With God, everything is possible. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, by faith, I called out for this prayer and people said, you know, you can't even, 
you know, bring 100 people, but the first